Good morning and uh, welcome to our monthly webcast. I am uh, Samir Mehta and I will be moderating uh, this session number 18. Uh, you would have noticed uh, there has been about a 15 to 18 minute uh, delay in starting which is all weather related, uh, a patient not being able to reach the cardiac cath lab uh, because of all the uh, northeast uh, storm which we are facing. Uh, we have another exciting case for you. In a moment I will uh, take you to the cardiac catheterization laboratory where Dr. Kinney and Dr. Sharma are ready for uh, another genuinely challenging case. Uh, Samin, uh, good morning. Uh, uh, a very happy new year to you. All right. Good morning. Uh, happy new year, Samir, as well as to viewers and our new partnership uh, uh, with heart.org, which will be the case number five for the new relationship and uh, total case number 19. And uh, despite this is the snowstorm warning, the weather-related delays, we are 15 minutes off. But hopefully, same thing, the wrap-up at 9.15, and start with this another challenging case, uh, which the pictures we we started doing as you saw for last two webcast uh, announcements that uh, there are uh, the key still frames of the angiogram is shown uh, with the announcement. Now, with that note, I'll take you through our case uh, present case with this prior history and uh, the angiogram while uh, uh, Anu uh, getting ready uh, patient uh, for the live performance. Now this. Uh, a uh, patient is um, uh, the 64-year-old male. He presented in November with non stemi and has cat that time had three vessel disease and normal mild LV dysfunction largely because of infraposterior uh, hypokinesis. He underwent successful uh, aspiration thrombectomy and then bare metal stent because large vessel. There were five uh, millimeter, 20, five uh, times 20 millimeter, two of very flex uh, Boston scientific stems placed in RCA with balloon pump assistance. Since then, patient did well, went home and uh, continues to have class 2 angina. And we did a uh, 30 day maximum stress test because of his uh, angina as well as his residual CAD um, and uh, which showed uh, moderate to severe apical ischemia which will show to you and mild fixed infralateral defect. Now he has a history of a small MI about 15-18 uh, months ago and that probably will be the vessel which we will be intervening today as hyperlipidemia and ex-smoker he has can uh, cancer of tongue received surgery and radiotherapy and he's on all those good medical therapy aspirin clopidogrel metaprolol xl lisinopril and torvastatin now this is the three vessel disease uh, with 30% left main and i think best would be that i just show the angiogram now this is the angiogram done on november 2nd the you can see the disease in the right, uh, in the left system, uh, very clear cut here. Uh, the disease in the proximal LED, then subtotal mid LED, the and uh, there is a disease in the diagonal. So that the truly from bifurcation point of view, it is one one and zero diagonal disease there, but may not involve the ostium properly. Uh, and uh, truly, I mean, so that uh, there is a disease, maybe some involvement, and many times we know this one one zero yeah, becomes yeah. one 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 because of the plaque shift and displacement which happens. There is some calcium proximally. There is a disease in the, uh, the you can see in that ramus. And uh, I wanted to just show once again the disease in the LPL. See that 80-90% disease in the LPL, uh, ramus and so and so forth. So that lot of disease on the left system. LPL, ramus and LED diagonal which I just showed. Now, LV function we just do a limited ventriculogram during MI uh, showed some inferior wall hypo. And this was the right coronary. You can see here, very thrombotic, although it was not a STEMI patient, but you'll be surprised that with that thrombus, how this uh, patient did not present with the STEMI, will be a grade four. Uh, the thrombus all the way uh, with a multiple lesions in a large, very ectatic vessel, which vessel which you know, going to uh, uh, likely uh, will have a slow flow and may occlude. Uh, therefore, uh, at that time, the Syntax score was calculated was 33, right coronary contributed 6 of it, but uh, because of the non stemi situation, and this is our protocol, that those are the 5 uh, or 6 uh, contraindications that if patient is having PCI, even with the high syntax score, you go ahead and do the PCI. Uh, don't take the patient out for a cabbage um, uh, consultation. Old age, acute or non uh, stemi and non stemi, prior CVA, uh, severe COPD, 
very high BMI or, or patients in the trial. Otherwise, patients come out. They're, what they did, and you can see, Anu did a tremendous job, put a balloon pump, and clearly these cases, you need to be fully ready. Put a pacemaker, put a balloon pump, and did a, a six French Lima guide with, the, I'm showing this picture again, just to impress that how uh, complex this lesion was, and uh, followed by first uh, export catheter uh, thrombectomy, and this is the result. After two passive export catheter, as you can see, there is no embolization, uh, no slow flow, and of course, you had to give chemically nitroprusside or verapamil, those both were used in this particular case, and this is a 5 20 millimeter Veriflex stent in the distal RCA at 12 atmosphere, another 5 20 in the proximal, the post dilated, and this is the picture we had. Superb. Based on uh, the angiogram, uh, angiographic finding before, having this kind of excellent results, Patient has balloon pump and the pacemaker removed and uh, patient did subsequently well and uh, went home after uh, 48 hours. Continues to have class 2 angina as I mentioned and has ischemia on thallium. Now of course uh, patient comes back here uh, today for PCI of the LED diagonal bifurcation and possibly that LPL. Syntax score now because 33 minus 6, 6 was the RCA. So it will be about uh, now uh, 27. So that is the syntax score of this patient. So what also we will start doing now is that appropriateness of revascularization. Remember those three uh, baseline criteria, whether patient is symptomatic or uh, the degree of vessel disease and how bad is the nuclear imaging or uh, the non-visual testing, which incorporate both stress test as well as the baseline ejection fraction and maximum medical therapy. So that where this patient fit in, in this grid, of uh, various combination permutation and all cases which will be presenting now will uh, the, try to fit into this equation the where we are. Most important uh, lesson from this appropriateness criteria is A means appropriate, U is in um, equivocal or indeterminate, uh, the, that is still okay. But the key is the keep away from I which is right, uh, you know U is uncertain. So I is inappropriate. So inappropriate is the red bar and we want to be away from it. Now this particular case yeah, uh, has uh, based on the two vessel disease and class 2 angina and is not on maximum medical therapy because maximum medical therapy is defined as ACE inhibitor, beta blocker, long acting nitrate or renalazine. So the, since he is on only beta blocker and second therefore but he has two vessel disease and second issue is based on the class 2 angina and two vessel disease. Uh, it fits into the appropriate criteria of uh, coronary revascularization. And having said that, that uh, we want to just uh, discuss for next 5-10 uh, minutes while uh, getting ready uh, for uh, the, uh, Anu will be ready, he has taken a picture of the right coronary artery and with the left system which I showed the bifurcation lesion of the LAD diagonal. The point here would be, I will concentrate on the bifurcation lesion. And what we will do is that we get few input uh, from the viewers that more important, as long as the slides are provided, uh, goal should be that more an actual performance of the case rather than going through the slides because a lot of material is always available and they can be downloaded. So I'll just touch some key points on this bifurcation and rest will be the performance of the case. Basically, the introduction classification, DES versus BMS, one or two, uh, one DES versus two. If there is two, what is the best technique and what is the final recommendation? We all know the bifurcation lesion makes about 15% of the PCI, very challenging, high syntax score, and they're associated with higher complications and re -stenosis. There are numerous classification in the literature about uh, the bifurcation, and I would say that syntax score bifurcation lesion classification is the best one which combines the Duke, Medina, and ICP classification and grade the lesion from A to G in uh, based on where the stenosis lesion is, pre, post, or bo both, and clearly very nice uh, classification. That is what we use at present for the bifurcation lesion classification. Our type D is the most common, occurs in half of them, and many times, which are not type D to begin with because side branch is not involved, during the intervention, they become the side branch involvement. Uh, the second, which I think is a more of a functional classification, is called MADS. That is where you are putting the first stent. 
distally side branch or main and this is basically goes to the various permutation and combination uh, the where this patient uh, should uh, be qualified or uh, and quantified uh, based um, based on uh, the stent displacement very important which i would say in the bifurcation lesion compared to the regular native vessel is the side branch the side branch is the key because that really changes the whole game uh, and uh, the side branch angulation or side branch which we call y or t 70 or more than 70 if it is more than 70 is t or the side branch size is small less than 1.5 medium between 1.6 to 2.9 and three and above called large and third is side branch osteal disease because what happens to the side branch dependent on these three factors and that is what we take into equation whether angulation side branch size and the osteal disease clearly that higher the osteal disease likely that will be involved and go down during intervention of the main vessel issue about we say well ds is not approved for the bifurcation lesion agreed but even for the non approved lesions there are a lot of data that even your non approved lesions the ds does better than bare metal classical example is this scan trial of the ses versus bms you can see that sirolumus with a red bar extremely low event all the way compared to bms so the clearly ds is better than bms so you decide the bifurcation lesion should be the ds second issue comes you want to put a stent and that is what we have learned that put a one stent across maybe do the uh, intervention of the side branch and uh, then put a stent across and if st side branch gets pinched significantly go through it and open and rarely if there is a less than timmy two or three flow and a significant dissection then we put a stent in the side branch which is called provisional or conventional stent technique uh, problem with that technique is that you may miss the side branch because they come at an angle the majority of them are Y and they come at angles so that you will miss the top portion of the side branch and therefore the alone T, the way we used to do it was associated with in rare cases and that is where from the serous bifurcation study. They had a focal in re at the ostium of the side branch because you miss the ostium of the side branch which led to the numerous technique of using a uh, double stent uh, approach and of course the also at the same time that many trials have evaluated whether one stent better versus two stents better this was the classical landmark nordic bifurcation study showing that whether you use one or two stent there is no penalty there is no higher stent thrombosis and re rate is identical tvr with the overall event rate was about uh, the four less than four percent in both groups at six months clearly the angiographically two stent approach did better then we have the, uh, the BBC1 study which was presented about two years ago and came in circulation late last year. We're showing that complex strategy of two stent, which is the red bar, compared to simple strategy of one stent was uh, the inferior. The complex uh, two stent was inferior to one stent and had a higher stent thrombosis. This is one of them. Uh, but the issue is still remain that if you use one DES, that is a short side branch lesion, the medium size vessel, angulation is more suitable and patient issues with a de depth compliance you don't want to put a stent in the side branch. And that led to our approach that one stent or kissing stent means two stents side by side in a Y configuration or a crush stent uh, which showed uh, that you have a small part of the stent coming into the main vessel. It's a mini crush, few uh, struts into the main vessel then you crush in kissing dilatation or uh, the basically one stent technique but with side branch dilatation you just open it if looks good you leave it or you do a T stent technique or sometimes we call tap and then lastly the culotte basically covering both the side branches or main branch uh, with the fi final balloon dilatation the just to go quickly the T stent what we want to do is put a stent in the side branch and leave a balloon in the main vessel so just few millimeter projection into the main vessel you dilate uh, both of them and then uh, we recross and then put a stent in the main vessel finally kissing balloon dilatation give very good angiographic results the another technique which we are quite bit of favoring is the tap that is the t stenting with a small side branch stent protrusion in the main vessel that basically again guarantees the osteal coverage you put a stent in the main vessel then you are two millimeter inside and then you create a very thin carina uh, just single layer of carina with a kissing balloon dilatation and steps have been outlined on this side. Then the crush, which we very well know, few millimeter into the vessel. Studies have shown the cactus trial of the crush versus provisional. 
that they were identical, no difference Problem. overall. But one thing very clear that of the 177 patients, 14 patients did not have a final kissing balloon dilatation. If you did not, then you have a very high event rate. So that very, the principle is that you're doing a kiss, the crush stent technique, you have to do a kissing balloon dilatation. Then comes the simultaneous kissing stent, which we have shown many times, basically two stents side by side, and create a new carina. If the carina is less than five millimeter, we call V-stenting, and our SKS precise trial showed uh, actually compared to conventional stent, lower side branch restenosis and uh, trend towards lower TLR. There was no difference in death, amyor stent, thrombosis. So if we put all of them together, one stent or two stent techniques, uh, as you can see here, the seven of them that of the middle from the Nordic trial on the left side, we still have some learning curve that the two stent technique with the mace and TLR was higher. But once you go to the more better techniques and better understanding, there's no difference in the two stent technique versus one. Same thing with the stent thrombosis. So that except, uh, as I mentioned, the old trials used to be higher, but the newer one, no longer the two stent uh, penalized uh, for doing it. Then question comes, crush versus culotte. If you're two stent, what is the better technique? We have only one trial called Nordic Bifurcation 2. As you can see, that there was some, uh, the favor of a trend towards culotte a little better although mace rate were identical in the Nordic bifurcation too. So the when would you use two stent? When there is a long diffuse lesion, large side branch, three millimeter, side branch angle is less than 70, and the, you are sure patient is going to take a depth compliance. Also very important question always comes that we have this oculostenotic reflex, and that is if you have a narrowing that we think that side branch is in trouble. And this is a very elegant paper from Korea that if you have 75% or visual obstruction, less than 75%, none of the patient had a FFR of less than 0.75. But even if you more than 75% angiographic obstruction, 38% of the lesion only had a FFR of uh, less than 0.75. So basically, even more than 75% obstruction, FFR, significant FFR was 38% of the lesion. So many times, it is more of a visual artifact. So avoid the oculostenotic reflex. If everything looks good, Timmy 3 flow, close your eyes, which I say put the dark goggles, come out, don't go after, because not necessary, usually functionally non-significant. And then the issue about the leaving the wire, trapping the wire, studies have shown that the angulated lesion, just leaving the wire itself by favorably modifies angulation, maintains patency of side branch, identify ostium and rewiring, and very important is that don't trap the large amount of wire, don't trap the radio opaque portion of the wire, don't trap the wire in the distal small branch. And clearly, if you cannot pull the wire, bring a balloon on the wire and balloon backup will let you bring the wire. Question comes, hydrophilic, non-hydrophilic, but I can tell you overall we have used both the wires and have no issues uh, with the uh, wire. But clearly, the trapping the wire uh, is a usual approach. Now, once you have gone with the side branches, uh, balloon dilatation with the stent, make sure you always end up with a kiss. And uh, this actually, uh, this is when you are dilated through the side branch. But if you are not, there is a, just published uh, two weeks ago, Nordic uh, Bifurcation Study 3, KISS or not KISS, basically if there was less than um, uh, the TIMI 3 flow, if it was TIMI 3 flow, uh, those patients were randomized to a final kissing balloon dilatation or non-kissing balloon dilatation, and you can see identical endpoints. So the no stent thrombosis uh, difference, no even angina class, and no uh, any other uh, MACE, was identical at six months follow up in these patients, kiss or no kiss. So the answer to is that if you are not gone through the stent, the Timmy 3 flow, leave it alone. No need to kiss based on the latest data. Then somebody asked, is there any data of the various DES? We have only one randomized trial of the Sirolimus versus Paclitaxel, which is a Spanish bifurcation study of 200 patients. And you can see that clearly Sirolimus eluting stent was preferred, had a lower event rate compared to Paclitaxel eluting stent. Then, the, if you have only isolated osteal lesion, what is the best approach? And this is actually, we published a few years ago, we call a stent pullback or drawback technique. Some people call balloon stopper, that you have balloon in the main vessel, a stent in the side branch, and you pull till you have dent of the balloon, and that leads to a very good outcome. And our data of 110 patients showed that non aorto osteal lesion, the lower need for main branch intervention with the stent pullback was 2% of the 55 patients versus conventional stent, which you did the way usually we do, it was 18%. So clearly, that uh, 
the pullback technique was superior uh, compared to uh, the the our conventional technique and of course we have a lot of bifurcated uh, dedicated stands so just to sum it up that uh, what basically turns out to be that if you have a uh, this uh, complex graph which i made it but really conveys the message that you have less side branch obstruction less side more side branch angle you can go away with the main vessel stand and then if you need to put it you can put a reverse crush reverse t or tap technique but if it's a angulated lesion in a small vessel and disease probably crush or cool out is better if it's a large vessel angulated side branch obstruction sks is preferred so that this is basically sum it up uh, of the more than 3 mm versus uh, less uh, moderate size 1.5 to 3 mm or less than 1.5 goal there should be leave the wire get a good result of the side branch stent across and rarely you have to recross then do a kissing balloon dilatation and if basically a small branch just stent across and purpose there is keep the artery open the keep it open purpose by leaving a wire and uh, with the second generation stent uh, with the open cell design very rarely you need to go through it and i say that uh, if need to give ex extra beta blockers or send some flowers but overall <laughs> algorithm basically as i mentioned the key remains the side branch and uh, the the side branch we need to tackle properly more and more data are coming the leave the side branch don't touch it even if it look diseased now with that note uh, i know anu is ready now and uh, we can uh, just bring the uh, I mean, camera uh, to the case so i mean based on uh, what you have just described <laughs> what would be your strategy for this case yeah in this particular case will be the same that uh, since this patient has not a osteal disease that we may after opening the main vessel we may put a stent in the uh, diagonal uh, first and then put a stent across and if there is a disease uh, some uh, pinch then we follow by a kissing balloon dilatation and that hopefully will take care yes. of any plaque so shifting also uh, yeah. uh, angiogram if you see here we went back to the lv no but let, let them come there anu uh, no, can yeah. we show can yeah. you show us the follow up of the rca yeah yeah uh, the lv gram if you can see it are they projecting the angiogram he had a edp of 15 and uh, you see the inferior wall uh, not severe but at least moderately uh, diskinetic and this is the picture of the right coronary artery it looks very nice there are nice. two uh, bare metal stent placed in the distal and one in the proximal they look good uh, if you remember the angiogram that was done during the acute mi setting there was moderate disease in the osteal pda and the body of the pda which we had left alone again same uh, going back uh, when they present in the acute mi setting just take care of the culprit more than 95% lesion the other moderate you leave it alone they actually improve when they come back And well also i think uh, there was some residual thrombus which is all cleaned out yeah uh, anu you had mentioned that uh, uh, samin had mentioned about using the nitroprusside are you giving it through the guiding catheter or through an export or no a... we use uh, the twin pass uh, twin pass uh, is you is over the wire system compared to the other export catheter you they are uh, sorry the twin pass is a monorail compared to the our other over the wire system so it's very easy to use a twin pass and uh, give it distal you have to give uh, distally at the level of the lesion or at the distal portion of the vessel so that it reaches the microcirculation when there is slow flow and you give it through the guide usually does not reach the distal uh, vasculature and if you see today the left is this is where our uh, focus would be samin are you concerned about the left main there I think it's just the way we have uh, taken the picture is still okay. less than 30%. Yeah. And no. we have a seven French guide sitting there uh, with the no no damping. Uh, damping. Okay. Yeah. But but no but that is true. That is why I as you saw that we did mention that the osteal was about 30% left main uh, last time and that was again with a smaller catheter five French but clearly when you use a bigger catheter things become important so if i had to read the angiogram today i would call it a 30 to 50% osteal left main but i think it's still within the range. Uh, we have previous view, uh, but again, many times you may not be able to see in every view. But uh, this is the tightest view is the important, and this one will be uh, 30 to 50 percent. Okay, so, now I think if you have seen that angiogram, always comes how are we, what kind of uh, you know device, a uh, wire, and how we are going to handle this wiring of the. It's not working. Play and go back. Okay. So if you see there. 
prox uh, LED and that is uh, well, some angulation is there though if we thought that there is no disease in the osteal diag if you see I think there is a moderate uh, disease in the osteum of the diagonal and we know that the anterior wall uh, has had uh, he has had an MI in the past and since there is a competitive flow in that uh, vessel if you see that of the mid LED could behave like a, a total occlusion with some kind of a bridge collateral so we are going to go with the fine cross and fielder wire uh, so that if it behaves like a total occlusion we can change our uh, wire this is a fielder wire yeah, initially I thought will not be uh, uh, that um, calcified, but here same thing that with the guide catheter and um, a little more better visualization. Remember, at the setting of the acute MI, you want to just go. Yeah, so bring your so yeah. Good, good, your good, plan good. is to put uh, the wire uh, yeah. uh, first the LED, the, okay. and then question is whether we need to do a rotablation yeah. of the LED. Yeah, bring fine cross slowly. Yeah, the same thing. Once the wire goes, that you have to bring slowly fine cross and then this is the case uh, with that calcium I would agree that we are we should change it to a rota wire once we cross uh, now question will always come where we are little die good so that's good so good. You see fine cross goes a little more Okay, we are going to take a little picture, see where we are, guide a little bit in. Yeah. It is just a very yeah, tight see. lesion, yeah. um, uh, we can go a little more fine cross, yeah. Let me see, or, let me see. one yeah. person has to do it. Very irritable ventricle, yeah, the many times you know, we start with a fine cross, fine XT. Yeah, now it has, but uh, I think this one will be okay. It definitely behaving like a total occlusion. Okay, give me a torquer a little bit. Let me see. Okay. Let me The way things are behaving, we definitely should do the rotablation here, go all the way. Now, same thing, first we will do, go all, pull back, take a picture and then recross and then change it to a, a small, uh, you know, rota wire first and then rota bar. Now, this uh, fine cross and uh, the fielder, we have actually oh, brought it down all the way. And Very also good. what Excellent you can see, I think a mid to distal LED, there is a myocardial bridge. Right. Yeah, good. Um, now again question is what bar the I think the 1.75 will be a little too big we go with the 1.5 right? I think 175 huh? 175 that's the question it's whether a we short go lesion. Give me the rotor yeah here right yeah play again so, so I mean would you consider something like an angio sculpt there also yeah I mean again uh, the question is that we need some because of this calcific, even we use, we can use 1.75, that's fine, 1.75 bar. That um, after, I think we may need to combine. Now, the little more, a little better picture here, I'm still not truly convinced that there is a plaque involving the ostium, we can always do the iris, but, uh, but clearly that there is, uh, in many of these cases, you know that osteal will be involved. Osteal, if not now, in few seconds, as soon as you do a first dilatation, not after the rota, because rota will cause less plaque shift that not uh, after the rota but uh, that as soon as you will finish uh, uh, the, the post dilatation that you will have a plaque shift into the ostium which is not surprising and uh, keep going. So I mean I thought uh, you would probably have uh, gone with the 1.5 uh, but uh, till where uh, what part of the LED would you be uh, ablating till? I think, I think just, it's up to the mid LED. Yeah, like just, after the, just after the septal, I think is a lesion, and the mid to distal would be the myocardial bridge. So you're guessing uh, the size of this LED is going to be what a uh, three o? Vessel, no, Probably vessel three is five. quite big. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Three five the, actually, LED. what happened is just now 
we have gone to the less magnified um, the projection, but if uh, it's a very big vessel, if you see here, no, it will be I, a 3.5. Yeah. I, I meant in the yeah. mid segment. Uh, yeah, there were, uh, until that area, you know, that subtotal area at uh, 2 o'clock, mm -hmm. 1, 1 30 and 2 o'clock, that is the one we are going to use. And then we can use the NC. Uh, uh, we have one point effects. Up, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, we have one time 20. Effects. Yeah, 20. 3 or 20. 3 or 20, we have it ready. Yeah. High pressure. So, I mean, okay, in, the, in the description uh, where you were talking about the bifurcating lesions, what is your uh, preferred uh, stent for a uh, uh, bifurcating uh, lesion? Yeah, I mean, once we do a two stent approach and there is a side branch involvement uh, and a good size vessel, we actually, uh, from our point of view, it's a small, then we don't even do, um, the idea should be that not to put any stent, but if, good, 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 good that if we decide for this two stent approach, uh, kissing uh, stent technique, of course, is the most favorite. But uh, if it's a small size side branch, but the tap, we're actually getting a very good experience uh, and uh, results with a tap technique. That basically means that you dilate, you put a stent in the main vessel, dilate with the kissing balloon the side branch. You initially you left the side branch uh, wire and then go across and dilate the side branch ostium and then bring the stent um, uh, basically two millimeter into the vessel. And then create the and then same balloon you use to the post dilatation kissing dilatation, then uh, another balloon into the main vessel and create a one single carina, uh, single layer carina, and that actually doing very good uh, angiographically as well as procedural point of view. Um, uh, therefore, tap has become our part standard. Went too far. Pull back. Yeah, that uh, tap has become our standard uh, in a small side branch lesion. If you have the large side branch vessel, then uh, clearly the kissing stent still remains the best. Preferred approach, I mean. Of course, a lot of people will question about uh, we can the uh, uh, from uh, the. But you see, uh, Samir, even one seven five bar, less than ten seconds, uh, I was able no, to cross a lesion. Yeah, no, but second lesion, lesion, true lesion is the second. Yeah, yeah that, that's this, where I was concerned about the one seven five. Good. Yeah, same thing. In this patient, the blood pressure goes down to about 80. So you had to stop there and then increase the blood pressure systolic to about 100. And this is the most important point we have made. Particularly with the rotational threctomy, that you do not do a rota until your systolic pressure is about 100. And Vicky here uh, giving uh, dilute neosinephrine boluses of 100 and 200 micrograms or even 400 require to get to a, um, a systolic pressure of 100, which will cause little reflex bradycardia and takes about uh, three to four minutes. And that is good enough to do a rotablation. And after that, you will stop. Uh, then uh, you will not need it. But clearly, that avoiding the, si the slow flow by giving uh, neosinephrine and not doing the rotablation when blood pressure is in double digit is a very, very important point. Yeah, this is the lesion, was the yeah. tough lesion in yeah. question. How much RPM are you there at? 20 seconds. Good. Go up. Get the RPM. It's about 140. Uh, 140 RPM. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you went up? Yeah. Good. You still will keep it about 4 or 5 times into the low speed. And if it still get, keeps there, then you go to the higher one. Uh, like 160 and 170. Yeah, good. Okay, there it went through, I think. For people to see. Okay. Now, once the uh, rota is done and you are polishing, there is no reason to take a picture uh, at that point because it is uh, the rota bar itself will obstruct. So, basically, what we do in that case, just bring it out and then do the picture um, unnecessarily, otherwise, you give uh, extra contrast which is not required. Anu, you've got such a huge experience with the rotational etherectomy. What is your limit of tolerance of tortuosity beyond what angle even you will not try it? Oh, the angle, anything, I think more than 70. Of the lesion. Yeah. yeah. Of the lesion. Mm -hmm. Not the, I mean, again, if you have proximal tortuosity of a normal vessel, means you could have, like suppose you want to do a distal RCA and you have a tortuous uh, proximal RCA and you know what's going mm -hmm. to happen, even if there's no lesion, trying to get the burr down there, 
you will uh, cause, uh, you know, due to the differential Don't cutting wire. of the vessel. Looking, uh, the distal is looking uh, very good. Very good, yes. And But I, you know the point I always say, from the angulation point of view, that if you cannot get your balloon or stent, uh, yeah, that, that's okay, that's from the Neo. Uh, Vicky, slow down on the knee a little bit. So yeah, clearly, any time you give a little knee, will cause a reflex bradycardia is very important. You wiring that the you don't worry about it. Yeah, wiring the diagonal at the stage. Yeah, yeah. I'm wiring the LED first, and then we go to the diag. Okay, Same thing. We are wire. wiring with the run through wire with the in the LED, and we'll uh, use a fielder. So, are you are you still uh, often uh, going into the situation where uh, you know to tackle the tortuosity, you are uh, going down on the burst size? Yeah, that you know. Therefore, coming back to your point, uh, and that is now we can remove this wire because there are three wires. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that um, now basically what I would do that uh, you know the, your question was that angulated uh, lesion. What is the best approach for those angulated lesion? To me, it's very cut, simple. Cut that nose. if you cannot do anything different, uh, that your cutting balloon does not go, your stent would not deliver, and you want to use a 1.25 bar, it's okay. In those cases, you want to avoid it. Many times in the, the even 180 degree uh, turn of the vessels, we because nothing will go despite double wire techniques and uh, our uh, body wires and stiff wire that you may end up in using a small bar 1.25. So that uh, by and large, the uh, angulation I would say maybe uh, the more than uh, 75 uh, there will be contraindication. But uh, but basically in some rare cases you may require that in those cases be you can do, use a small bar uh, and uh, if your regular techniques are not working. So. Yeah, now this is the fielder wire going into the diagonal and uh, so far the ostium of the, uh, the diagonal is reasonable. I mean it's a... Well, the way the tip of the wire was behaving, uh, it suggested there may be I some... I think, uh, uh, no, no, I still think there's moderate the disease in the right. diagonal, mm -hmm. at least 60 percent. All right. We Don't should at least do a cutting balloon Good. there. Sure. So now I took the rotor wire uh, out of the LED. So we have two wires. Maybe we can angio sculpt. We can build second legion also. 2.75 or 3 angio sculpt. Yeah. You want to L take? LED first. Let's dilate the LED because that will give us a little better picture. Show the last picture again. So what's going to be our uh, strength strategy here? No, plus. 3 -o. We'll take a 3 -o. Play. The last one. Good. Now this is the after the rota. Good. Good. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Now we're going to stand across. No, no. We'll do one distal and then maybe end up in putting a V. Go. We need a two stands maybe in diagonal. Okay, yeah. Yeah. No, go a little further first. This 15. No, no, no. It's a bridge. Look no, no, the, look where the lesion was. Okay. This is a 3 yeah. yeah, this is a 3 20 uh, the, the quantum apex. Yeah. Okay. You are at the lesion. Okay. Good. Yeah, this is it. So, you will go your, uh, you will check the 8 atmosphere uh, yeah. Yeah, strategy. Yeah, 8 here. actually it inflated very nicely. Okay. So, that I just went to, um, this is a very large vessel. So, so now I am at 10 at atmosphere. This, at this stage, you feel happy that ablation was oh. sufficient. That, yes. Yeah, this yes. case now. Yes. With a 1.7, you know what? That approach of uh, 8 and so, I would have done more with a 1.5 bar. But I think the 1.75 bar is good. Now, 8 opened, there is still a little dent. I think this one we can go 12. Get us a 3 o. Angioscalp. We are 3 o. Angioscalp, right? yeah. Now, we are going to use, since it's a long lesion, uh, we are, the many times the question have been asked by you or the, our audience that when would you use angioscalp? In this particular case, because there is a long lesion uh, and uh, the, we keep only 6 millimeter, uh, our um, the cutting balloon. That's a more... Uh, in the little, little distal. Huh? little distal spasm there? Yeah, or, uh, yeah I think yeah, that's... Yeah, that's okay. That is... We thought so. No, no that, that is a bridge. That oh, part no. of that was a myocardial bridge also. And actually, we'll do a quick... Uh, I was there at that time and we'll be able to see it. Which is a semi-lunar uh, halo. That space. Typical of myocardial bridge. But we'll uh, come to that. Now, question is, first we need to tackle the side branch. And the diagonal, 
uh, there is some disease and uh, uh, definitely at the uh, mid portion, uh, a little bit away from the origin and uh, we will take care of the, both the lesions with the, uh, this is the 3 or 10 millimeter angiosculpt, uh, which we favor usually for our instant restenosis and if the side branch lesion is long, like, like in this particular case. Anu, across the board, uh, when you take a look, uh, is your commonest burst size uh, 175? 1 1.5. 1 1.5. 5. 1 5. 1 5. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say that uh, in our, uh, at uh, our center, maybe 60% will be uh, 1.5 and 30% uh, will be 1.75. Then other 5 uh, will be 2 or 1.25. Okay, we are going up now. This is the 3O angiosculpt. The advantage of the angiosculpt over cutting balloon is that if necessary, you can go to high pressure of 16 and 18. So right now, I'm 10. Now, the other question always comes, uh, if we are uh, uh, oversized with the burr, what is the time we change, undersize? So, what you do in the, the situation like this, that uh, two things, after uh, almost like half, half the time, we miss total burr time not more than three minutes, so half the time. When we are talking like one, one and a half minutes of a burr, you can increase the speed. So you saw that we were at uh, the outside the body, we made it at 150, but when we were burring, it was 145 or so. So when we were in the body, we increased the burr speed, we went to 155. And do that for uh, almost a minute and still no difference, you can go higher, 160. No difference, then at that time, after three minutes of burring, then you downsize. So in this situation, we would have gone to one fiber. Excellent. Yeah. This actually is two atmosphere, this 3O ostium. But I think there is a there is a too much stake at uh, this point. And I say very clearly that question is not that you have one stent or two stent. The question is the the we should have ref let's see this picture. Yeah. Um, you want to go a little further again, distally? Okay. Huh? Good. That was a basically. The, in this uh, area, uh, area of uh, bifurcation lesion, I would say the question should be a little different. And the different question should be that which case we are going to use two stents. And therefore, start with the two stent right from the beginning. So it's no longer it's a one or two. No. Question is identify where you are going to use the two stents and start with the two stent approach because anytime you do a bailout two stent, your results are suboptimal, more time more can uh, the dye and uh, potential complications. So that basically is, so that this case, which we knew that if there is hostile involvement, we go with the two stent approach. Uh, also, when you're talking about the two the stent trio, approach, trio, uh, one long stent for the diagonal or? Uh, yeah, no, I think one long stent for the diagonal and one long stent for the LED. So if necessary, I would say the LED actually is much longer. 28 will be too small for the LED. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking of a 3 or 28 for the diagonal. Two. I think diagonal need 2. Okay. Because angle. Yeah. yeah. No, but I think this is a 4 stent case. We thought it will be a 4 stent case. Uh, we start with the, uh, the 3 o. Uh, let's put one in the diagonal. Gives us some idea uh, that how much it covers. Let's go in the diagonal first. And clearly when you are putting 2 stents, always use the A vessel which is most difficult. And clearly that angulated vessels are more difficult. Because in the straight segment, you can always go. And that is why we always talk about when you're doing a culotte, that uh, use the culotte basically going, uh, the last should be going into the main vessel. Because you can always rewire the main vessel compared to the side branch. Uh, and same principle applies here, uh, that uh, the diagonal is little angulated, so that you need to be more, uh, may require a little uh, is, is struggle or push. But the, these uh, present generation stands, they actually work so well. Even in these uh, angulated lesions, they will just go uh, very simply. Good. Now, if we take a picture here, I think we might I think be, it'll okay. be okay. Yeah. yeah. Get Good. us uh, the other three o. Yeah. Okay. Three o twenty eight. Yeah. This is Anu. I'm going to request no, you I'm and the camera person to okay. clearly yes. demonstrate us the technique here. Yeah. If you need three five, that is three five. I think that is bigger. No. Okay. Then five. No, let's so go now to three o. Basically, get yeah. So, mean, I wish, yep. wish we had a way to, to poll the audience and see how many people would have uh, preferred your strategy versus just going with the angiosculpt for both the diagonal and the LED. Yeah. No, but you saw that. Uh, one uh, point I also say 
that who those who are the believers that you know don't do the stent in the side branch i say okay but let's say if this patient would have come only for the lesion in the side branch would you have stented the answer is yes then i said that's it so basically now your purpose should be that there is so much diffuse disease you know the balloon alone or uh, results will be high restenosis and therefore if you can uh, eliminate that issue of stent thrombosis that has been a ba- major issue that uh, put a two stent strategy up front starting and do a, a correctly and this is the way, uh, if you keep it here let me take a picture this will be the v stenting uh, although we may need to pull back 1 mm uh, the lower one right 1 mm. mm back in the led so you have a 35 in the led and the no no, no we have a t- both 3o both 3o 3o okay. 28 zines yeah and then we know that if we, they need to be dilated further uh, with we can dilate yeah we are going up now okay go step by step so both are going to deploy it at uh, bit eight atmospheres yep so i mean what so we make sure the, the stents have been 10. deployed this good, good size for so the 10 yeah 10 down why do you now, like why do you like the zines in these situations yeah go. no i mean uh, the the oh, and become 12 is going to 12 yeah that uh, okay. no uh, and now at this time we make sure that it is a good expansion of the side branch stent which we make see it. that many often uh, you can make sure the ostium may not be expanded well but uh, still do not go higher than 12 atmosphere of deployment if you need we will have to go back and do post dilatation now the led same thing now question comes uh, the the his question uh, samir's why? question was that why uh, zines versus yeah you can use others also that we are used uh, cipher traditionally uh, over the years uh, and have with a, a very good results Uh, no. This one actually, I have gone with the 14, knowing that uh, maximum is the 14 is after 14 is no no because you have a more distal as dissections and so give about 15 20 seconds for the full stent expansion. Thin struts takes a little longer time compared to our first generation thicker struts that with a clearly uh, you were able to expand the stent quickly. Here takes about 15 20 seconds so that one inflation. Uh, you leave it about uh, 20 plus second so the now we were done 3 yeah. now we and go now we are going back with the both will go up 10 or 12 10 sure. 10 okay go up to 10 if you see good expansion we are done or one of them could be slightly low, higher if there we is not both, a full expansion both are at 10 10 yeah. the, i am going to led is little dense so i am going 12 there good uh, so the both 10 nice and 12 expansion and both down same and time both down the simultaneous inflation and simultaneous deflation now you can see that carina carina is about 3 mm so that by definition this one will become a v stenting rather than sks because many people use v and sks sim uh, synonymous but which is no we actually have made in our papers uh, uh, the last one being in cci that v means if it is less than 5 mm sks is more than 5 mm idea still remains you want to keep the carina in single digits uh, but uh, the, the definition we are divided at based on the 5 mm mark so v versus sks okay now we are going to take out the balloon same everything will be sticking out in this particular i pull back the wires guide is coming out of the left main and you start jiggling both now the guide gets pulled the wire get uh, goes deeper in try again does not then i to get the guide out and i'll try to take one balloon at a time so the led is coming out diag both out and then what you can do advance the That's guide very nice illustration of removing the balloons yes <laughs> ready yes now you can take picture yeah okay what do you think diag this to like Yeah, may need a little work in the diagonal distal edge, right. so that. Why not put a short stand there? No, but see if there's a little balloon. Hmm? We always try to do a. Huh? Same balloon. Not? Yeah. Or we have the other balloon. We can use the three O. We have the. Yeah. So short three O, twelve three O, ten yeah. balloon. The question is that is it just a little plaque shift or it's a um, uh, the issue with the um, uh, basically. Uh, that little distal edge uh, dissection or incomplete coverage i my uh, feeling is it's incomplete coverage because yeah. uh, once you had that stent there you had a feeling that uh, so i think we we'll just put a short stent we okay. just wait take too long good 
Take a picture now. Okay. So, I mean, there's a question here. Uh, why not collect or crush? Yeah, the, clearly, as I said, that uh, the same, the crush, I would say that one of the big issues with the crush remains the rewiring. That no matter how good you are, I think I do what a little balloon think, uh, Balloon should be yeah, okay. Balloon. No need for us. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you, the one of the, even in the experienced operators, in the uh, Nordic bifurc, uh, I mean, in the cactus trial uh, of uh, the, they wanted to cross that of uh, the 177 patients in about 13 patients, 13 or 14 patients, they could not recross despite all the efforts. And those had a five times higher stent thrombosis, restenosis and so. So that to me, the crush, particularly if it's a large vessel, uh, it's a, I, we just don't prefer. Same thing with the culot. Now in this particular case, I would say if I had to go non-SKS or V, I probably will be comfort completely comfortable using the tap technique. Okay, now I'm same having some uh, problem to get the balloon, if you can see here. So just a little bit of jiggling movements, you will be able to get your balloon yeah. through the stent struts. And this is important because our wires have not come out. If the wires have not come out and you are having trouble, then you may have to rewire again. So you were used a balloon which was previously used? used I thought yes, otherwise. Yes, okay. yeah. I thought otherwise you would use a much shorter balloon. Yeah, yeah because we use the C minus. Now right. see about the LED. The, do we need to do anything for the LED also? Yeah. LED Don't give something. nitro. It's a bridge yeah. is causing this yeah. trouble. Okay. Give up. Good. Yeah. I think let's do the LED iverse and then we are just reaching the time. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, fine. Good. Don't give any vasodilator. Okay. Please. We're taking a picture. Yeah. No. Little. The distal little segment dist is little distorted. Yeah. You have to put one short. Short is what? 12, 12 or 15? 12. 12. No, Which one? You have to wait. 2.75 no, gram. No, no, no. Yeah. Three, I think it will be okay. But you do you have to go up to that other branch. Yeah, but don't go beyond 15. 12 will not, not cover it. Uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go with the... No, no, then 12 is okay. Because that was a 15 balloon, right? 20. That was a 15. 20. Yeah. Well, but the the distal part of the stent, I think, was still within the stented segment, so... Yeah. Uh, right. Okay, give us a 12. 12. Yeah, I think we just go with the... Um, uh, 3 or 12, yeah, good. 3 or 12 is okay. Uh, Samin, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure this is going to look just fine with the short stent. In the meantime, um, what was the strategy? Uh, was this start. patient on Prasugril? Uh, oh, uh, no. who is that? No, this patient was... Uh, uh, yeah. This patient was on uh, Plavix? Uh, Plavix, target. yeah. He okay. was uh, given Plavix and what's the uh, inhibition? No. No question was why not uh, given pre Prasugul right. originally. Particularly we, for the, the, the stent. MI, very complex yeah. disease, yeah. Oh, when he came as an uh, acute yeah, MI, because right. he came from an outside hospital in the ER, they had already started uh, Plavix and we just continued that. So they gave him 600 milligram load. Excellent. And have we tested him today or no? 15, they're saying. So yeah. We okay. So now question comes is at this time, uh, it is a more of an elective situation, uh, no longer acute. And if he goes by that gravitas, uh, even by changing that those who are high, what is the PRU unit? 254 is okay. Yeah, no, no, 254, yeah. Five, that high, but still. Uh, the platelet reactivity was associated with a slightly higher event rate, but it did not differ. Good. 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 But uh, by uh, modifying, by giving a double dose of uh, clopidogrel did not make any difference. Uh, 10 is okay. The okay, down. Uh, yeah. We'll pull back and little area, we can go a little higher. Overlap. Yeah. Few millimeters. Yeah. The now question comes is actually the uh, many people before, I would say the Gravitas trial, this kind of case, I will switch it to uh, Prasagul now. Give 30 milligram load and 5 milligram daily. That has been our uh, practice. But now, in um, our enthusiasm, 
since uh, AHA after the data on the Gravitas trial and modifying the platelet uh, inhibition, you know, approach of the clopidogrel dose based on, uh, yeah, based on, uh, simply based on your uh, inhibition uh, has, uh, you know, really tamed down. Whether uh, it's, it's the right approach or so is a different, but uh, clearly with, in a large number of patients, or the 2,000 patients, they have showed the identical event rate of 2% at six month follow up. So that seems to be that modif modifying this approach. Now, what would have been the number or event rate if you use Prasagul is a different story. Uh, but uh, definitely what we learned by the Gravitas that even in these non-responder, mm -hmm. that in these non-responder patients, need to guide a little bit more. Okay, we'll be all right, yeah. So I take out the dye dye. Good, okay, good. That in these non-responder yeah. patients, that um, the uh, the just I by was, I was up yeah, I was, yes. No. So no, I want to dislodge of the LED first. No, no, that's good. Okay, good. Okay, let's get the IVAS. We are going to do now whether we need to do anything to the LED because there is slight dent at the LED. I know we are reaching our time, and goal was that we'll finish in time. Here, go for the LED IVAS. There is a little bit at the bifurcation, slight dent inferiorly, and then um, uh, the. the the little distal edge and uh, that myocardial bridge and so we are going to look into all quickly and then but otherwise for all practical purposes we are just about done now the as i mentioned that my personal approach in this case knowing what uh, we saw today that it's a 15 percent inhibition i uh, put uh, the change this patient with a 30 milligram uh, the press and roll followed by five milligram daily we actually rarely use 10 milligram and our protocol says the 10 milligram basically will use in the patients if they got more than four stent or more importantly if the body weight is 110 kilo. But clearly that uh, the weight, there is a response of the pressagul uh, based on the weight so that uh, heavy weight patients maybe 10 milligram. Why five? Clearly because we have seen cases with the bleeding and we have seen the 10 milligram in majority of the patients wipes out the platelet uh, on inhibition. Uh, uh, activity altogether aggregation so that 90 percent inhibition 95 98 99 percent so the five and they used to have some bleeding whether gi neurological or groin bleeding i have one patient who have bled after uh, 10 days from the groin there was since we approached the five milligram this actually has worked out very nicely the uh, filter. The filter. that five milligram approach has been done very good and we are no case of stent thrombosis with the 5 milligram. Then clearly at the same time that we are in a process of doing a pharmacodynamic study, working with the DSI and Lilly uh, that need to have some data on this 5 milligram uh, more uh, going forward objectively. Go. One more wire. Now many times what happens is your stent and balloon will go uh, on the rota wire. No, keep it there. Keep it and there. the iOS does not. The iOS would not go. Here. Mm -hmm. no, you need a, another wire side by side. Yeah. Oh, good. Went. Sometimes, you know, manipulating the guide. Yeah. And come with the speed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we should be able to show the IVAS. Uh, same thing, the IVAS, the main. Um, we can... Yeah. yeah, focus there. Good. Okay, this is uh, at the level of the myocardial bridge. You want to go there? There's a lot of disease there. Yeah, some yeah. disease there. Distally. This uh, situation of bridge as well as uh, disease. Plaque. Yeah, plaque. plaque. Yeah. Yeah, see Some that semilunar space mm -hmm. which keeps coming. That is the uh, the segment of the myocardial bridge right there. That semilunar space is the hallmark of the myocardial bridge. Uh, although many times you'll see a systolic contraction of the vessel also, but this still is little disease. We didn't want to go that after, but there is clearly the part of the myocardial we are getting at. And to now the we are at the stent I think, uh, expansion is very good. Yeah, nice uh, stent uh, position. Distal edge is okay. No well, uh, evidence of any. Dissection. Just uh, after the bifurcation, the inferior yeah. part is the one of the concern, I think. Now we are reaching at the level of the carina. This is where the question is. I think still good strength opposition. You'll see the nice. double barrel there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice double barrel. Right. So a 3 0 stent in the distal LED segment and 3 0 in the diag, yes. No, uh, n I based on the IVAS result, you're going to put in another 3 O in the mid segment of the LED. No, no. If you want, yeah. The question was that there is a yes. The there is a lot of disease distally in the LED. Part of that is complicated by the myocardial bridge. So what we are going to do? 
let's take a very good picture because there is still a uh, distal there is a significant disease in the vessel but uh, clearly this vessel has been closed for a time see that uh, that lot of plaque part of that may be just a vasoconstriction that opening the vessel may we can go back to fluoro uh, that opening the vessel may just do a dilatation later on uh, flow mediated dilatation of the vessel and uh, we'll just take one picture and then decide that do we need to put another stent there or we just done with it well purely by iwas what would have been your decision yeah again i mean iwas and angiography uh, both i think uh, would uh, yeah. li uh, should would uh, leave the distal already no take a picture uh, again yeah, yeah. Also now the wire presence of the wire could make that. Yeah. I'm going to take Don't out the wire. Pull back the wire here. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, looks quite it's, uh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, it's showing signs of a uh, bridge. Yeah. The, I mean, it's looking very good. Uh, that is, a, I know there is a small dent at the level of the septal, but that's okay. we don't need to get crazy there is a very nice lumen good stent expansion there i'm sure the lumen will be more than 8 mm in that area uh, we can pull back the wire well the the also i thought the diagonal is looking uh, excellent yeah ready sine yeah this is that led moderate to severe diffuse disease there is still a disease in that uh, hilateral which is there and the lpl the question could be uh, in these kind of cases you know once you are done uh, all the work you are done here and knowing that there is some residual disease which will require either uh, reintervention stage intervention or follow up nuclear stress test so that that will di dictate what to do subsequently so that's what i would say in this particular case if everybody is okay that we stop here we go to the next last slide uh, to make it um, our um, the, the take home message Uh, go the to stress test that yeah. he had before uh, this intervention never showed any lateral or uh, infra posterior ischemia yeah. but i think a couple of months later we can repeat a stress test and see how he does after this particular intervention has been done if yeah, we that, can that go, seems can a very go to the last slide yeah. because it's not go my computer uh, the laptop has been frozen if we can go to the last uh, of the disk which we have but that just basically summarizes Uh, what I have spoken already uh, of the one or two stent approach. Uh, okay, if uh, they have the slide also, they can put the last slide. Anu, so far as you are concerned, what would be your uh, teaching uh, tips, uh, take home message? I think uh, if you uh, take this was a calcified uh, bifurcation, uh, bifurcating uh, disease. I mean, not heavy calcium, but moderate calcium. So the question always comes for people who are approaching this. Uh, Uh, again go with the approach like you are uh, doing a cto so we went with a fine cross you go with a fielder wire you are able to cross it no problem otherwise you may need to approach with a cto wires and the next important thing is a good debulking of the bifurcation since because of the calcium whether you use a high pressure balloon whether you use cutting balloon or you use rotational laterectomy either way you need good debulking good preparation of the lesion before you can do this bifurcation so that at the level of the carina whether it's a v sks that uh, good stent opposition like with i was has shown which would decrease the incidence of uh, stent thrombosis and uh, same i think like uh, dr sharma mentioned even if you wanted to put one stent that you could do have done a like, you know debulking again cutting yeah. balloon off the diagonal and just put a stent across with this uh, new generation uh, stents uh, which is uh, the second generation stent because of the open cell design the side branch closure definitely is lower compared to the first generation the ds both of you also do a lot of uh, angioplasty i know outside the country have you tried any of the bifurcating stents actually um, the wherever i had a chance uh, had not been uh, the never ch had a chance to use it yet but uh, theoretically we uh, in korea when two years ago they did a left main using a xs plus stent Uh, of the biolimus um, and uh, that's the only one i seen it used uh, uh, going for you know in a live case uh, when i was moderating a session but personally i have not used it and as you know the boston scientific petal stand which are very promise has gone back they are going to the drawing board because of the uh, wire twingling and of course the abbot coming up with their frontier 
with now um, uh, will be the same uh, uh, our um, uh, like a Zion's uh, prime bifurcated stent that is the next one on the line and then there are a few others uh, you mad the uh, sidekick and so so just coming back to the point I'll just uh, make it very simple that bifurcation lesion interventional technique the 2 DES usually one but for the 2 US start with upfront so that no longer in my region should be the debate one or two stances no the debate is that which case you will need two stents there, there is no region for us to say well you don't need two stents that's wrong we know every trial every trial 18 to 23 percent 18 to 33 percent of cases they needed to put two stents so there is no controversy the two stents says here to stay the question is that how which case you'll use two stent so the identify those cases use your best approach why uh, the, the T tap cool out or crush and basically those are angulated lesions and when there is a long side branch lesion now also I want to mind you that all these uh, where your one stent strategy the side branch lesion you know the, what is the mean length of the side branch lesion is less than 5 millimeter the mean narrowing of the side branch lesion is 65 percent so that if you have a very angulated long lesion tight lesion you know that you are going to put a stent so start with that approach and we know doing two stent strategy correctly not associated with the stent thrombosis or restenosis second is many of these cases like I showed why you don't have bad results on long term region because you plaque modify if your stent does not expand that's where the problem comes you want to put a one stent but your side branch dissect that's the problem so that what you do is you prepare the side branch well by cutting balloon by angio sculpt so that good osteal expansion and so that you don't need to put a stent if you not need to and even if you put a stent that full stent expansion and of course uh, the strategy we continue with the bifurcation stent uh, will make we seems to make our life simpler but so far as you know the bifurcation stent being tried over last uh, six years and I was told that only uh, C mark approval has been for the access plus uh, the, of the DAVAX stent basically so it's still far away from uh, getting to um, the real availability at least in the United States maybe outside some of this bifurcation stent will be available Anu last word from your side no, I think uh, <clears throat> for the viewers, always the question comes is uh, how else that uh, that they could have done uh, without rotational atherectomy. I think you could have just done a good cutting balloon and uh, post dilatation with a high pressure balloon just to make sure the lesion has been uh, well prepared and uh, done uh, any of this uh, strategies of uh, two stent uh, technique that has been uh, described. Uh, I think uh, that is... Uh, I know I'm sure uh, many viewers will uh, approach these lesions uh, a little differently, but uh, the fact that uh, we've done about uh, more than half of the cases, bifurcation lesions, all uh, generally with excellent results, I think uh, talks a lot about uh, the strategy, about the need of uh, debulking adequately. Uh, Samin, congratulations again. Uh, uh, good work by your entire team. Uh, uh, we'll proceed uh, on with session number 20 on February 15th. Uh, Everybody comes to the side. Come. Yeah, Space we fight. have yeah. Uh, yeah. our uh, fellow Mitch Weinberg tell and uh, Vary Sham. They pull the camera for the last uh, and we want to say go to our main, uh, where is Vicky? Good. We see yeah. you very nicely. All right. The, yeah. yeah, we just have our uh, lab, uh, uh, you know, the staff, which is uh, Pablo, Ricky, yeah. Jennifer and... Uh, Vicky, who always uh, help us, uh, and uh, the great thing about uh, this patient also, who knew about this and wanted to be part, uh, he wanted to be part of this particular uh, session, uh, and we would not have been able to do this kind of uh, live cases without the help of our fellow. I have uh, Mitchell and Sham already started a case on the other side, and uh, saying that, uh, Happy New Year to all our viewers. Uh, this is uh, our first case for this year, and more challenging bifurcations will be shown all through the years. Thank all right. you. Good. I mean, uh, thank, you. thank you so much. Uh, our session number 20 will be on February the 15th and uh, the case for today will be archived uh, with all the questions answered within 48 hours. Uh, with that, we close and uh, we'll see you next time.